Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this masterclass on how to fix unprofitable sales teams. I just want to give everyone just a moment to settle in. Hopefully, you've accessed the workbook already. We will, of course, be kicking off. I'm Ambrose Blowfield, and on behalf of the Sales Mastery Company, I wanted to personally congratulate you and also to thank you for choosing to spend the next 45 minutes of your life with me, whether that's here live on the multiple different platforms we've got streaming out to the world, or whether you're watching this in recorded form because it's the middle of the night and I'm running this live for Australia and New Zealand times, and you're in Europe or the UK and you're watching it on recorded form. Well done for taking the first step to overcoming the challenge that we see time and time again with businesses of all sizes across all sectors, which is a inconsistency when it comes to the sales performance of their team. And that's what we're going to fix in here and now. So be prepared to take notes. Be prepared to take action. If you're driving right now, pull over at the side of the road, set yourself up, grab yourself a scrap of paper or maybe the notes section on your multiple device or your, or your tablet. Take some notes and take some action from today. Just making sure uh, for those of you who are able, I would love you to be able to make comments in the comment section. As I mentioned, we're on multiple platforms right now. So in most cases, we can see your comments. There are one or two different streaming platforms where we can't see your comments. But if you are able to make comments, that would be absolutely fantastic. So let's strip it back. If you are a business owner who wants greater performance out of your sales team, you are absolutely in the right place for where you need to be right now. Likewise, if you're a sales team leader or a sales manager and you're hands-on and you're passionate about your sales team and performing at the highest possible level, then yes, you are absolutely in the right area. Equally, if you're working in a sales function or a marketing function, or you really want to learn about business growth and development, even though I haven't written this for you, this masterclass is without question going to add value to any salesperson, marketing person, or someone who's focused around business growth. What I've seen some great readers come in. Great to see you, Teresa, in Brisbane. Here's a question for all of you right now. Take a moment. Remember, snap out of it. Ignore your emails. Ignore your text messages. I'd love to see in the comment section, what is your job title? Appreciating you may do more than one job. Please share that in the comment section now. Depending on the platform you're in, I should be able to see that. So it should be a bit of a mixture. Sometimes the comments just come to myself as a panelist. Sometimes they'll go to everybody who is live. Please share in the comment section right now, what is your job title? Are you a business owner? And if you don't want to write business owner, just type owner or BO. If you're a sales manager, just type in SM. If you're a sales manager, got a chief marketing officer. Excellent. We've got a business owner. Fantastic. Good to come on board. Excellent. Hello from the Philippines. Loving the sound of that. Yes, of course, it is fantastic. For Eastern Asia, this is a great time zone because they're often in line with sort of the Perth to, to South Australia scenario. OK, so we've got a bit of a mix coming through. I've got some messages coming through on my chat as well. So every now and again, you'll see the top of my head as I look down at my phone. So we've got some WhatsApp chat going on as well. So the question just to stop and think about it. We've got business mentors out there. That's great. So the thing to think about right now, director, excellent, Jared, great to see you from New Zealand. So let's stop and think about it. Do you ever find yourself getting frustrated as an owner or mentor or leader or director with your sales team because they're clashing with other teams potentially? or they're being inconsistent with their performance, or they're unpredictable. We've got some directors coming through, some sales leads coming through. Awesome, Stuart, in wonderful Bathurst. Great to see you. And or do you find yourself getting just frustrated with individual team members, where some of them you look at your team and go, absolutely, they've nailed it. I love what they do. I think they're doing a phenomenal job. And then others you look at it thinking, why are they drawing a wage? Why am I paying for them? They don't perform like them. Do you find yourself ever getting frustrated with that? Or likewise, is it that you're just frustrated when you haven't fixed all your sales engines processes and therefore there's inconsistency from one quarter to the next, one month to the next, sometimes even one week to the next? If that's you, if you ever find those frustrations, either with the whole team, with individuals or with the sales engine and processes, just type yes. I want to know, are those frustrations that you are finding right now or is it something we've just found with the thousands of businesses that we coach? So just type yes. If that is something for you, I know there's a bit of a delay on some of the comments coming through at the moment. If that is you, whether that's part time, full time, all the time or very, very rarely, the chances are you are going to find yourself putting in too much time. Thanks, Sheila. Putting in too much time 
possibly losing a little bit of sleep, but certainly having to cope with a high degree of frustration from one week to the next. Thanks, Jonathan. Appreciate your comments around that. The net result could even be that you lose your top performing salesperson. Meaning, if you think your sales challenges are there right now and you then go and lose your number one salesperson, imagine how that's going to compound the challenges around at least your mental health and probably even your sleep. Thanks, Lynn. Appreciate the comment there as well. So I want you to stop right now and to answer this question in the comments. Which of these do you really want right now? Stripping aside what's on your plate right now. Which of those? Thanks, Darlene, for sharing the workbook. It's downloadable, people, um, in the chat area. Appreciate that. Thank you. So which of these do you want right now? Is it you're wanting guaranteed cash flow? Is it you're looking for ways to improve your sales growth? Is it that you really want to put together a high-functioning A team, so to speak, the sort of people who are A or A star or A plus performers regularly? Or is it that you're right now, you're needing all of the above? So if it's cash flow you're wanting, put in flow or cash. If it's the easy ways to grow sales, different techniques to grow sales, put in easy. If it's just about you want an A team, put in A. That's all we need to see is A. That's what I want right now. Or is it all of the above, in which case type all of the above? Awesome. Just see some chats. Plenty of alls. Loving the sound of that. Thanks for sharing with the panelists there. Thank you. As I mentioned, some of your posts will actually come into everybody's area. Some of the posts will just come through to ourselves in terms of my team, which is set, spread out across the world right now. Fantastic. Now I want you to give yourself 20 seconds of your time. Now, whether you choose to write for 20 seconds or simply sit and meditate and think for 20 seconds, I want you to answer this question for yourself, not for anyone else, but for yourself. Why is today and why is now an important time for you to rectify variation across your sales team? Why does today matter? Why have you reached out on this masterclass, whether it's live or whether you're doing it in recorded form? Why does today the day that you need to take control, you need to look for some improvements and you need to take action? You've got 10 seconds to answer that for your own benefit. Don't share it in the chat box, just for yourself. Why does today matter? And secondly, take another 20 seconds to ask yourself this question. How would it feel if you're leading a team of only A players? Now, I was very blessed. Out of doing, after doing a double business degree, I joined Procter & Gamble. Procter & Gamble at the time, so this is going back over 20 years, at the time, they only recruited graduates. So that's people who are in the top 5% academically in the UK. And they only took and interviewed people who'd completed a 30-page application form. So they'd already filtered out. Now, when I got to the final 30, of which 15 of us got jobs from the 3,500 applicants, I looked around the room and I'd never had it before in my life. There were 29 identical people to me, equally ambitious, equally disciplined, equally focused, equally motivated, equally wanting to change the world and be part of what was the second most respected company on the planet at the time. And all of a sudden, I found myself, everybody was an A player. In fact, the rejects from Procter & Gamble often go and become the sales leaders of the future across Europe for other companies. So the 15 that don't get the job out of the final 30 go and do phenomenal things elsewhere. Plus, they've probably got a bit of a chip on their shoulder because they didn't get an offer from the company they really wanted to work for. Okay, so just going back, if I may, for a second, I just wanted to ask yourself, you know, what would it feel like to only be with A players every single day? Just stop, close your eyes, think about it. Showing up every day where everybody around you is an A player. Because I want to show you, having worked for Procter & Gamble, that's possible. No matter how small or large your company is, that is possible. Now, as I mentioned a little bit about my story uh, before, as you can probably pick up from my accent, I was born in the UK and studied in the UK, then Switzerland, then the UK, then France, then back to the UK again. And I've had over a million dollars worth of training and conferences and training, uh, formal training, academic and non-academic, put into me over the years. And over the last 18 years with my wife, Joe, and I running our business, the biggest claim to fame that I've got, the biggest thing that gets me out of bed in the morning is that I help small to medium family businesses more than any one of the group, help them smash glass ceilings, whether they're targeting the five or the 10 or the 20 or beyond million turnover. That's what we do. That's what gets me out of bed in the morning. We've certainly for quantifiable results, 
We've helped those companies, the 15,000 companies we've helped over 20 different countries make over $2 billion in additional sales. That's what I love. As for my personal why, as you can see in the image on the slide, it's my beautiful wife, Jo, my daughter, Asia Rose, and also my other daughter, Arabella. And nowadays, apparently, we've got a fifth member of our family, which is Ziggy, which we made our children, by the way, wait two years to access. They wanted a dog for two years. So Ziggy, our dog, came from two years of chores, homework, helping us in our business, helping at soup kitchens, helping out others to clock up brownie points to earn the right to now have a dog. So Ziggy is officially a fifth member of our family, though not in human form. But according to our 13-year-old daughter, he's well and truly a member of the family. Now, my purpose from a business perspective is all about making sure that we break and smash glass ceilings. What I don't want to see in businesses when we coach them and train them and develop them is that they set themselves a goal such as making the, you know, the breakthrough at the 10 million mark and then they kind of stagger their way over the line and then they drop. In fact, where we started our business back in Taranaki, unfortunately, there was quite a trend of businesses who became, say, one of the award winning businesses in Taranaki's Chamber of Commerce Awards. And then they often stagnated for a few years afterwards before they kind of revived themselves. I want to teach people how to smash targets and smash glass ceilings and build it with a scale so that it becomes standard for them to perform. If you've got the right things in place, if you've got the right team in place and the right processes in place, then you should be smashing glass ceilings no matter what the glass ceiling is that you're going after. Next up, I want us to remember that winning does matter. Now, I appreciate depending on where you're raised, you may not have heard the expression that winning and losing doesn't matter. It's how you play the game that counts. Now, I, you might have had that. You might not have had it. For some of my English upbringing, I did have that. I heard that story again and again. And I just thought it was absolutely insane. This is about mindset. Winning does matter. This is chess. I played chess at primary school. In fact, I got to play against the Swiss national chess champion, which is a nine or 10 year old or whatever it was at the time. It was quite nerve wracking to go toe to toe with a 30 year old grandmaster. But the reality here is, believe me, it feels fantastic. And no, I did not win. He was phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. You could see what I was doing six moves ahead. But if you win a game of chess, it feels better. If you win a World Cup, it feels better. When you win at sport, it feels better. And when you win in business, it feels better. And when you win in sales, it does matter. Forget this whole participation award. Well done for showing up. There's times in your life that being part of a team should feel good. But it does matter. And unfortunately, one of my big criticisms for the global push in the last 10, 20 years around schools is we prepare kids that thinking that showing up is good enough because winning does matter. Winners are grinners, people. Winners are grinners. So embrace that and celebrate that. Next up, I want to share with you this area. And I want to find out in the chat box, please, which of these you most need and most want right now. So again, just silence the noise. Which of these do you most need and most want right now? Is it that you're wanting more turnover at the top end of your business? Is it that your focus right now is all around growing our profit margins? Is it that your focus right now is around scaling your business and your team and your processes or your sales engine? Or is your focus right now on building an A-team? Or is it all of the above? So just type in the comment section now, please. Is it turnover? Is it profit margin or margin? Is it the scale of the systems and processes? Or is it about an A-team? Or is it all of the above? Please share that in the chat box now. You've got 10 seconds. Which of those do you want right now? Okay, so I've got some comments coming in. All of the above. Awesome. A-team, love the sound of that. And yes, it's not because I was an 80s child that I liked the A-team. Although I quite like the revolutionary spirit of them, the, the going out to fight and get results. All, 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 all seems to be winning it. Margin, turnover, sales. Yep, so I'm assuming when you said sales, you mean turnover. Awesome. Thank you for that. Again, feel free to share those comments. We want to know and we want you to understand where are you focused right now? Now, here's what we see. After 18 years coaching thousands of businesses worldwide, this is what we often see. And there's a disconnect right now. And this is what I want to help unify from today. We see business owners and sales managers or sales directors setting really clear vision and goals. 
They report to their board or their management team and say, you can rely on us. This is what we're going to deliver. We're going to deliver X turnover this year or in three years or in five years with this GP or profit margin. So we see total clarity at the top of a team or the top of an organization. And then this is what we see. When we spend time talking and coaching and developing sales teams, we see it's more challenging than that clear vision. We see significant ups and downs from one week to the next, one year to the next. And what often happens is sales teams get into this slog of start of the year, mountain to climb. Okay, let's get into it. And then people start getting into it. And then we say, oh, we need to improve. And they'll do a few improvements, but won't necessarily complete them. And then they'll take a moment and go, well, I suppose we can improve that. We'll tweak that. And then it comes to a month end or a quarter end and the pressure comes on and they drop all the improvements and they hammer the phones, flick out emails, do proposals, do visits to suddenly achieve the month end or the quarter end results. And then for the first three to five working days of the next month, they're absolutely shattered. So their efforts dip, their productivity dips. And then guess what? Halfway through the month, someone says, you need to improve. So then they start thinking, well, I need to make some improvements. And I guess towards the end of the month, they hit mad panic again. And then they start to crank up all the activities, forget all of the improvements and just try to stumble their way to the end of the month. And it's fine for adrenaline. It's an exciting way to lead. It's an exciting way to live your life. But the fact remains is this burnout up and down is exhausting. It's exhausting for the business owner. It's exhausting for the sales manager or sales director. And it's certainly exhausting for salespeople. So the clarity of vision is not the issue. It's often around the activities that the team take, the steps that the team make. So let's cut it down to the basics. What we have found from training and coaching thousands of businesses around the world is there's four main areas of sales growth that you need to nail. And they compound the effect from one area to the next. So if you improve one area in one area, improve one sector, you need to focus on the next. Once you've improved in that area, you need to focus on the next. Because if there's any one of these areas that's particularly weak, if it's relevant to your marketplace or relevant to your business model, one of these areas can dampen your success. So let's strip it back and let's just start asking you some questions around these four areas. Area number one is the ability to, to attract and win and bring them in the right new clients. So it's all about new client acquisition, otherwise known as prospecting in the world of sales. The second area is particularly outbound focused is our ability to close without discounting. We'll come to a statistic in a moment around discounting and how it affects your performance. The third area of growth that many people get coached and trained from us over the years is around growing and maximizing our existing clients. And then likely the last one is inbound scalability. So having an internal sales process and making sure your team know what to do, how to qualify in the right jobs, how to qualify out the wrong jobs and clients. And at the same time, building that sales engine, such as developing and scaling your team. So four areas, there's new area of growth. There's the closing without discounting. There's the growing and maximizing existing accounts. And likewise, number four is scaling your team and scaling your inside uh, or internal and ground abilities. Now, Jen just wanted to share a bit of a quote here uh, from Gareth Bull, who's a leader of multi-million dollar business um, in uh, here in New Zealand, uh, particularly coaching and developing his team in a really hands-on way through the early days of lockdown in 2020. And what I really liked from his quote is he picked up the fact that the results, which is a 15% growth, came from a change in mindset and a change in behavior. That's what we're trying to do. You want to turn around an unprofitable team. You haven't got to get them motivated. Yes, you need to do some degree of motivation, but it's got to be a change in ongoing behavior. That's the bit that's the challenge. A shift in behavior comes from a shift in mindset and a shift in action. Again, our results come from our actions, which come from our thoughts. All of that is important, not just one area. It's not just a skill improvement. It's not just a better leader, a bit of motivation, a bit of inspiration. A lot of people attend sales conferences around the world. I've spoken at dozens and dozens of in multiple different continents. But typically, the effect of those conferences is after about three weeks, people go back and do what they were doing before the three weeks. So behavioral change is what we need to be thinking about. So I'm going to ask you, as we work through this process together, Please pull over at the side of the road if you're not pulled over at the side of the road right now. I want you to understand where are you right now? Aristotle said, to know thyself, this is over 2,000 years ago, to know thyself is the beginning of all wisdom. 
I want you to have wisdom in sales. So I want you to think about the team at this stage in a traffic light system. So this is what you're going to do. I want you to think about the four areas we've just talked about. So when it comes to attracting new, that's winning new projects, new opportunities and new customers, is your team in a red light situation, an amber light situation or a green light situation? So a green light is your nine or 10 out of 10. Absolutely humming. The engine's revving. We've got a regular pipeline of jobs coming in. You can almost switch it off and close your eyes. And for the next three months, it's always going to work, even without your help or support. Or are you more that sort of six to eight out of 10 where it's working most of the time? You are able to acquire the right customers, the right prospecting, the right projects, the right opportunities. It's always the right fit most of the time, but it's not humming. You have to kind of work at it. So are you in the amber situation? Or are you in the one to five out of 10 where it's red, where it's haphazard? Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's haphazard, it's unpredictable. And if you said to you, look, go out and generate 10 new customers in the next 10 days, you'd go, I don't know how to do that. Or we can't rely on our team to do that. So when it comes to new customers, are you at red light, amber, or green? Now you've got to ask yourself this question. From a closing without discounting, being really prepared for meetings, taking control of presentations, taking control of conversations. Are you green light, nine or 10 out of 10, absolutely smash it. You take control, whether you're selling to a billion dollar company or a hundred thousand dollar company, you can absolutely nail it, walk in with total confidence, no matter what objections get thrown at you. Or you amber light where it mostly works well, you're mostly in control, you mostly prepare, you mostly stay in control. Or are you more the one to five out of five? And this is team. I appreciate you might be attending this as a salesperson, but thinking about your team, are you red light, amber light, or green light in this area? It's so important to understand that. The third area of growth comes from maximizing and growing our existing accounts. This is an area most people like. It's more familiar. We've got some interaction and some knowledge and connection and some rapport. This is an area most people enjoy. And are you as a business? Green light, where you are absolutely smashing it. You know how to you know, manage and grow and be strategic for a three to five year vision for your key accounts. You know how to absolutely maximize your A's and B's and C's. And you know how to grow C's into B's and B's into A's and A's into key accounts. And this is effortless. If you're like that, then you're green at this. If you're mostly like that, you're still amber. You're probably that six or eight out of 10 mark. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm sorry, you're in red. And remember, we are judged by the weakest link in our team, not by the best performer, not even by the average performer, but by the weakest performer. If you're integrating this, this is right across the team. Finally, number four is the scalability of your inbound sales and conversions, the ability to qualify in the right jobs and qualify out the wrong jobs. And likewise, having meeting cadences and your team's absolutely humming from an internal perspective, well-led, motivated, and they absolutely pound the pavement in terms of ticking off KPIs effortlessly. When it comes to all of those things, inbound sales process, meeting cadence of managing your team, KPI hitting, are you green where your team consistently close your eyes for 12 months, they'll hit it. Or you're amber where close your eyes, one week they'll hit it, open your eyes, they have, they've missed it and you start to panic. Is it amber where it's hot and cold, hot and cold? Or is it red? You don't really run sales meetings. There's no structural agenda to your sales meetings. You don't know what the KPIs are or the team are missing them regularly. Are you red, amber or green? So what I'd like you to share, please, right now is I'd like you to share which area is strongest for you. Please share in the chat box now. Of those four areas, new, closing, growing, existing, or scaling, which one of those is your strongest area? Please share in the chat now. And then I know you're not, you're not meant to do this normally, but please, I, what I'd like you to do is then put in capitals, which area or areas do you need to focus on? For where your team is right now, for the aspirations you've got to grow, which of those four areas, put in capital letters in the chat box, which of those four areas is the one you need to address? It might be one, it might be two, it could even be three, but which one really needs to get your attention right now? 
because I want to focus your mind before I share with you ways to improve or areas to improve. It's so important that we do that. So please, please share that into that area in the comment section right now. Fantastic. So for some people, it's all about scaling. I appreciate that. Thank you. For some people also, yep, new. I can see somebody new. Just got some comments coming through as well. Profits are closing without profit margins. Appreciate that. Absolutely. So growing your existing customers and being able to understand your ABCs and your key accounts. Absolutely. Okay. So it's a bit of a mixture, actually. So loving the sound of that. Thank you for that. Okay. So let's just take a moment right now. And again, think about where you sit on this timeline. Now, we've helped businesses from literally, you know, part time businesses working, you know, two half days a week pretty much to billion dollar companies. Our sweet spot is in the middle of all of that. But the reality is we've helped businesses of all size. What we've also noticed is there seems to be a bit of a pattern on two fronts. Number one, for you to be a $20 million plus or a $50 million plus business, typically you need to have green lights in all areas. And what I'd love you to share if you didn't mind, and again, feel free to make it private, but I'd love to know how many green lights have you got? Zero, one, two, three, or four. Four is a maximum. And what we find is the high-performing businesses often need a bit more hands-on help, but often they can have four green lights flowing. But what I also see is those trying to break or smash the glass ceiling at 5 million, 10 million, 20 million, whether you're talking about US dollars, Canadian dollars, Aussie dollars, Kiwi dollars, even euros or pound sterling, whether that's a five or 10 or 20 million, when you're trying to break that ceiling, it's unlikely that you've nailed all four areas. And when we're coaching and developing teams, we want to help them nail all four of those areas if they're relevant to their business model. So at least think right now, and if you can share it in the chat box now, how many green lights do you have? Where are you right now? Aristotle said, to remember, to, the, to know thyself is the start of all wisdom. Socrates then said, wisdom comes from knowing what you don't know. So this is about wisdom as well. I want you to realize the areas you can improve, how many green lights you need to turn on from maybe amber to green or maybe red to amber, amber to green afterwards. Because Socrates was a smart guy in terms of Greek philosophy. And he was saying, you know, you need to know what you don't know. That's where wisdom comes from. Now, I'm not going to dispute the philosophies around Socrates or Aristotle, but they're certainly cleverer than me in an intelligence scale. Understand where you fit. And now let's look for areas you need to address in these four areas, the most common areas. Now, this is not an exclusive list. Something I'll share with you in a moment. I'm so excited today to also be launching officially at Sales Mastery Academy. And again, if today's session was useful, feel free to connect with us on LinkedIn. Likewise, subscribe to our YouTube channel or like us on Facebook so you pick up on these masterclasses and the tips and advice that we share. We're sharing a huge amount of tools free of charge at the moment. So if they're going to help you grow, feel free to latch into that by connecting with us LinkedIn, Facebook, and of course, YouTube. When it comes to attracting new business, we recently just ran a global survey called Pulse the Engine Room Survey across three different continents in particular of North America, Europe, UK, and then Australasia. What was sad for us to see, for those people with the designated role of new business development, only 50% of them said they were targeted and focused and disciplined when it came to prospecting. And they are the new business developers. So if you imagine someone is running a sales territory, if that isn't their sole job, this is part time in a job, then these people are very ill disciplined when it comes to new business development. So that's something to keep in mind. These are people whose job it is to be disciplined and focused on prospecting. Half of them are not. These are the four areas we see time and time again. As I mentioned, this is not an exclusive list for you to address, but these are things to ask yourself as we go through. How good is my sales process when it comes to prospecting to build my sales pipeline? Am I going and prospecting for the right clients in the right sector for the right opportunities? Have I got the right approach and skills and mindset for every step of the process? It can be a long, drawn-out process for some. Some people, it's six days, six months, six years even. And are we taking disciplined action? As that quote came back from the global survey we ran, 50% of people are ill-disciplined when it comes to prospecting and unfocused when it comes to prospecting. So we've got to take control around that. Next up, let's look at the second area around closing without discounting. A number of great statistics came out of the global survey we ran. One of them is this. 
that 58.3% of high performing salespeople, those in the top 10% of their sales team, so those the high performing within their sales team, 58.3% of them close without the need to discount. And then when you look at the lower performers, those in the bottom 10 to 20% of performers, only 16.7% of them are closing without discounting. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is clearly something that high performers do, closing without discounting, low performers avoid doing. That's a phenomenal difference between those two. So guess what? We've got to make sure we can close without discounting. Areas to focus on for that is to prepare fully every time. Now, I have to say, time and time again, I have had salespeople, whether they're senior manager, most experienced salesperson, or a junior person, look me in the eye and say, yes, I prepare fully for meetings. And I say, great, show me. Show me your meeting template. Show me the questions you ask. How many questions do you ask? Oh, I don't know, five or 10, then I kind of wing it. Well, if you're writing down 10 questions, you should write down 20. If you're writing down 20, you should write down 30. Preparing fully is not the same as preparing well. There's a huge difference in performance from someone who prepares fully at 100% level versus someone who even prepares at an 80% level. Superior questioning is at the heart of control of conversations. Being able to sell your value proposition rather than discounting through price, where it's normally a race to the bottom in your sector, and handling objections. I love objections. Why? Because Procter & Gamble brainwashed us into us into understanding how to deal with objections, have the right mindset, the right processes, so that we didn't discount. Why? We weren't allowed to. They removed price being an issue, an area that we could develop as a salesperson, so that we had to become great at, dis at, at handling objections because we weren't allowed to discount. Now, as Greg said to us in Australia a couple of years back, you know, if you're going to take control of that sales process, you literally can win multi-million dollar opportunities the next week. I mean, straight away. I remember we were actually delivering some of the training while they were negotiating over that week. And then all of a sudden they used the techniques to overcome that. And it was a high profit margin and the, one of the biggest job they'd ever landed at that particular time. So again, we want an A team here. We want people to be razor sharp. Let's move into that growing account management area, an area that most people are very comfortable with. Here's something that was really scary. Only 43.8% of account managers, and we didn't look at all salespeople. We just analyzed account managers and key account managers. 43.8% of them are following a cycle associated with the customer ranking. Here's the scary thing. 88% of people said, we know how to rank our customers. But only half that number have the discipline to follow that ranking and know how to grow those accounts are proportionate to the profitability of those accounts. So ranking them correctly is a key thing to get right. But 88% of account managers said, yeah, I've ranked them profitably. And then we start thinking about, the, what about cross-selling matrix? Are we plugging the gaps? And have we got a sales cycle that we can follow diligently and in a disciplined manner so we implement the plans and strategy as opposed to simply put together plans and strategy. Let's touch on the fourth area, scaling your inbound process and scaling your team. What I've seen from coaching and training people worldwide in over 20 different countries is that three quarters of sales teams don't even have structure around their weekly sales meetings, the frequency of the sales meetings and their coaching meetings and their huddles or hacker meetings or toolbox meetings. They haven't even got a cadence around it. And yet when we ask them, do you think you need that? They go, yeah, absolutely, we need that. Three quarters of those, if not more, I'm trying to be generous right now. Three quarters of those don't even have that scalability in place. There's a lot of things to scale in your inbound process and the way your team actually functions. But one of the most important ones, if I could just reiterate it, is the ability to qualify in the right jobs and projects and customers and qualify out as in say no to the wrong projects or opportunities or the wrong sort of customers. Too often I hear marketing, sales, finance, admin, even operational teams complaining about the why do we have to serve this customer? They would do nothing but whinge. And the salesperson goes, yeah, but they help me, help me hit my targets. Here's the problem when it comes to growing your existing accounts and not having clear rules around qualifying in the right jobs or customers. The wrong people know the wrong people. People with poor values, poor etiquette, poor morals, poor ethics hang out with people with poor, poor behaviors and poor ethics and poor morals. They hang out with the same people. A-grade customers hang out with A-grade customers. B-grade with B-grade. Moral people with moral people. Like attracts like. 
So if you don't have a barrier for the wrong people to get rid of and push them out, then you're allowing the wrong people in. They're going to invite more of the wrong people. As Ross from the UK said to us, particularly coaching him in 2020 to 2021, um, said that having a regular cadence of sales meetings is helpful to him as a sales director, but also helpful for the sales team and being able to interact and get help because sales is challenging. We get opportunities thrown at us and threats thrown at us from one week to the next. So you can't go to a conference and learn something in two days and go, that's me done for 365 days. Change happens and we need support to be able to affect change and support change and make decisions as we go through. Remembering for an A team, we need to know and be able to maximize the return on investment for every one of our team members. Now, here's something we also find when we coach and train people worldwide is that if we keep doing what we've always done, we'll keep getting what we've always got. But you actually get worse because if the market moves on and if your competitors improve, you'll probably get worse than that. A lot of people say, well, if I keep doing it the same way, I'll keep getting what I've always got. Well, yes, if your market doesn't change, but whose market in the last two years hasn't changed? The world's moving on and therefore you need to too. Just to stand still, we need to improve. And for that, for those of you who want to find out more about our Sales Mastery Academy, please stay on the line. I'm really passionate about that. This has come back after 18 years of writing over 300 courses and also coach thousands of people worldwide. And we've tried to take the best of the best from our hands-on coaching and ongoing advice and consulting and support, as well as the best of our training as well in terms of best practice for what we know works for the business-to-business -business sector. That's what it's all about. Now, if you want to ask yourself, you know, who is this for? I have to be honest and say, if somebody is below the $2 million turnover mark, we've pro we have got other solutions for you. But unless you're particularly ambitious and you've got goals to smash that 5 million turnover ceiling in the next couple of years, the Sales Academy is probably not right for you. Likewise, if you're at the 25, 50, 100 million level, the chances are the Sales Academy is not right for you. This is for people between two and eight or 10 people in sales typically. We can do the academy process, but if you're at that 50 or 100 mark, you'll go through other challenges and you likely want a bit more one-on-one -on -one time for us to coach you through those four areas. But if you're trying to break the 5 million turnover mark, as I said, this could be in dollars, it could be in euros, it could be in pounds. If you're not in yen, because the yen is obviously a lot weaker than the, than the pound sterling or the US dollar or the Aussie dollar. But if you're looking to smash the ceiling at 5 million or 10 or 20, then keep listening. This academy is absolutely the right thing for you in order for you to maximize what the next 12, 24 or 36 months looks like. The outcomes of this are to grow our sales and turnover, to grow our margins to grow our consistency, and to be able to sleep better. So which one of those, I'd love to see in the chat, which one of those is what your focus is right now? Which do you want? If you could have a solution that was affordable and was guaranteed to achieve one of those outcomes, which do you need? Now, I'm not prescribing sleeping pills for those of you who want sleep. Yes, I can see some people have got sleep. Yep, thank you for that. And a long-term client there, appreciate that. Thank you so much for Western Australia. Is it consistency you're wanting? Is it turnover you're wanting? Or is it margins? Or is it all of the above? I mean, feel free to type all. Got some alls in right now. Consistency. Yep. Don't worry about typos. Yep. That's fine. Yep. We're not going to call it. It's not English class. I so don't worry if you can't spell consistency or if it defaulted to the wrong spelling. So again, if that's the what we're trying to achieve, what must we do? And what have we created the Sales Mastery Academy to do? Ultimately is for you to smash and master. Remember, this is sales mastery. Master one area for one quarter. And yes, you choose. So we guide you through your first quarter so you get into that rhythm. And then the next quarter, you pick and choose the next area to master. So this isn't, oh, do a course and then away you go and implement. This is learn best practice, embed best practice, action best practice, and then further enhance and develop so that over a 90-day period, you take either, let's say the first quarter we're going to focus on is about growing existing customers and maximizing existing customers. So you will learn what best practice is. You'll get our support around that. You'll help, we'll help you implement around that and we'll help you accelerate that. So after 90 days, you've got that part of your sales engine 
absolutely humming, well beyond just ranking your customers, as we identified under 50% of salespeople are following a sales cycle that they know they should be following. So it's all about action and implementation. And then you pick another area for what your business needs. It could be new businesses next. It could be closing without discount. It could be scaling the internal dynamics of your team or inbound qualification of in and out the right sort of jobs. So it's about focusing those four areas over 12 months. And yes, you can go back on the next quarter and go back and repeat a previous month because maybe you've moved into a new market or maybe you focus so well around new customers, you need to go back and maximize the growth of your existing customers the following quarter. But this is picking one theme, one quarter in order to master. It's something very unique and very, very exciting. Now, I do have to stress, as I said, those that are too big, so to speak, so they're 50 million plus, those people typically want to work with us one-on-one, -on -one, and the academy may not be right for them. Likewise, those who don't have a massive ambition and they're below $2 million turnover, the academy is probably not right for you. But if you do want to smash that 5, 10, or 20 million turnover ceiling, then this is absolutely the right thing for you. And we're going to make it available. And the next step is just so easy and absolutely so logical. But we need it to fit with the people who want to be dynamic, who want to contribute, want to take action and want to grow. We do have to qualify you before you join. We've got to make sure you've got a right alignment to us, right alignment to the vision of what you're trying to achieve. And we'll help you with that. At the same time, we only intake people once a quarter. So right now, as of today, we're opening for the April start. And then it closes again. Once April hits, nothing till July. And a lot can happen between now and July. So absolutely, numbers are limited. We, we cap it off at the upper limit because we know how many we can coach and manage at one time. So what we're going to ask for you right now, today was the first step to help overcome the issues around an inconsistent sales team or turning around an unprofitable sales team by focusing on those four areas. What you should see in your emails, in the comments section, or likewise on your screen there is a link to connect with one of our coaches for a 15 minute, no obligation call so that we can help you determine What's the number one roadblock you've got for your sales growth? Get absolutely clear on what you can do to move forward. Also identify whether or not we can help. And you absolutely have our word after 18 years with really strong core values. If we can't help, we will absolutely push you in the right direction. We'll point you in the right direction and we'll part as friends and say, see you on the next masterclass. If, however, after the 15 minute call, if we can clearly identify that we can help you, we'll book you into a free strategy session with myself and we'll identify exactly how we can help you. Whether that's through the Sales Mastery Academy or through another approach, we absolutely will confidently at that stage be able to say to you, yes, here's a solution. Now, as I mentioned before, the Sales Mastery Academy comes with a guarantee so that if you are on board, you can scale it up and you'll absolutely find huge return on investment. In fact, we highly expect that 100% of people will get more than the return on investment just in the first quarter by nailing that first quarter. All you need to do is to take action to book in for a scale up call free of charge. We will not be selling to you in that 15 minute call. It's just to identify where do you need to go right now? Can we help you? And then to identify, do you qualify for a one on one free strategy session with myself to talk about how we can help you and how we can accelerate your business? So for that, as we promised, today's masterclass was only going to be available for 45 minutes, but I will stay on the line for any questions you've got right now. Feel free to fire them through in the chat box. Other than that, this is the end of the masterclass. As I said, if your time was worth it today for 45 minutes, then I encourage you, with that 15 minutes we're giving you back before the top of the hour, use that 15 minutes to work with Joe in a scale-up call to identify can we help you and what is your roadblock to remove, what is your roadblock to overcome. So you can be more confident and actually take action and to identify whether the sales academy is there for you. As I mentioned, highly affordable, absolutely guaranteed. This is about action and results in those four areas. It is not about learning. It's not about training. It is about smashing things and smashing results, whether your glass ceiling is 5, 10, 20 or beyond in terms of glass ceilings. So I've been Ambrose Blowfield. We're, of course, the sales mastery company. Feel free to ask me whatever questions you've got in the chat box. And again, if you're on a platform that doesn't allow for the chat to come through and comments to come through, I apologize. But I know we've got three or four platforms streaming to me right now. 
In turn, a return on investment for the academy. And um, well, our guarantee is in, in line with a 10x return on investment. So for what people commit financially, they're to get a guaranteed 10x or we literally will work with you until you do. So essentially, it is a guaranteed 10 times uh, turnover response uh, from the academy. So that's a fantastic question. Thanks, Ayla. Appreciate that. So anyone else got any questions coming through, please let me know. I've just got some chats as well. Awesome. Okay, so I've got a few things coming through. I'm just going to jump between my two screens. Forgive me the top of my head. Okay, so first things first, what type of sector? Okay, so this applies for anybody who sells business to business. It's not for tourism, it's not for hospitality, and it's not for retail. We are experts in helping people smash glass ceilings selling in B2B. Way more complex, way more areas we can add value, and also typically a lower turnover of staff. So often when we start a journey for 12 months and we take people through some group coaching, group training, and everything else, then typically it's the same team at the end of the year. Maybe one or two people will have left. As I said, we're normally talking about sales teams of sort of two to 10 mark. Yes, we can help ones beyond that, but normally the academies for that two to 10 mark, that's really where we play best. That's the people we can add value to and really achieve massive um, scalability. Again, we've got some links in the chat. If you do want to book into the scale up call, it's just 15 minutes of your time. As I said, you'll walk away happy. You'll walk away knowing exactly where to from there. And the call after that is we can talk about the how can, can I help you uh, achieve that. The first call is just to identify, can we help you? And if we can't, where should you go next? So again, just wanted to thank you so much around that. Um, other questions coming in, forgive me for looking down. No, you don't have to have a sales manager. Um, I suspect one of your more senior sales people um, is taking kind of the role of sales manager. You do not have to have um, an official sales manager in order to be successful around that. Um, somebody's just asked, can we post a link um, on the chats, um, the chat area for uh, the Calendly call link, uh, please? If you can do that, that would be fantastic. If one of my team can do that, that I appreciate that. How many hours or minutes do I need to commit weekly? So it depends where you are in the quarter, but let's just keep it simple. It is under an hour a week to go through this massive growth phase, depending on how messy that area of your business is. So our part of the engagement with you is an hour a week or less, and we've worked really hard to be able to get it down to that. If you want to do more, you can, but it's an hour a week or less. That's all it is to revolutionize your business. But for others, you might need to go away and maybe you need to go away and rank your customers, or maybe you need to go and interview your customers, or maybe you need to actually go and implement the plan or the strategy you've got, which involves your salespeople going out on the roads and meeting customers and getting the feedback and taking our guidance on board. So short answer, it's an hour a week is what we say to people. One hour a week, that's all it takes. And yes, again, a couple of people just messaged me. Um, it is typically your team doing it together. So most of the time, if you're the business owner leading your sales team, you would attend it with your sales team. Sometimes if you've split your team into new business development, they might not attend the account management section and the account managers full time might not attend the new business development side of things. So one hour a week. And I say to people, look, assume it's the hour. We've got some really cool stuff in it uh, where, you know, for some months I actually help run a sales meeting for you. And believe me, can I motivate and inspire people to take action and create some real accountability around KPIs? Because I get to say what I need to say and you might need to have to be a bit more nurturing or a bit more, uh, a bit more supportive. So, again, can a member of my team please um, post the link for the for the Calendly link? Um, back into the chat box now. I know it's been shared before, uh, but I would love to see that link shared again, please, uh, from a member of our team. Thanks for, for your patience, Jared. Appreciate that. Um, for anybody else, fire through your questions. Just got a few ones coming through here. Okay, so this is from a business owner who's doing everything. Um, now, I do know a little bit um, about it, um, but in terms of about your business. Um, so I know that you're leading the business. I know that you're selling and I know that you're leading the sales team. Um, for your size of business, you've got four people in sales. Absolutely. The academy is perfect for that. As I said, two to 10 is the average uh, for this number. There might be people a little bit beyond that, um, but it's really not for a one man band or one, one person team uh, in sales. So thanks, Darlene. I appreciate sharing that um, with Jared in the, in the comments section. Thank you so much. 
for everybody else, fire through your questions now. I will shut off at the top of the hour. But if you've got questions about what we covered in today's masterclass, fire them through. Or likewise, book in for the scale up call um, and address it with our coach um, on that. And as I said, if you progress um, into a one on one strategy session with me, then I can address some of your questions around that. We really want you to get absolutely crystal clear of where are you now, where could you go, and what are those key roadblocks you need to overcome. You know, that's what we're all about. That's what gets me out of bed in the morning. As I mentioned, absolutely get fired up about this. I love helping ethical family companies in particular smash those glass ceilings. And again, in the story of David and Goliath, I want to help the Davids take down the Goliaths, not the other way around. I came from a Goliath. I have all respect for Procter & Gamble, but they're a Goliath. And I don't want to help Goliath. They're already doing plenty of business. I think they turn over 70 billion US dollars now. So they, they don't need my help and they certainly don't need your help. So Again, we want to take people down. Um, extra couple of comments come through. I know some of them are just the panelists. Um, no, um, you, you're right to highlight this. Um, so no, motivation isn't enough um, and nor is mindset. So that is part of the solution to smash glass ceilings. But as we had with Gareth in terms of his quote, we need to alter mindset and we need to alter behaviors. And that comes from time. So unfortunately, Despite the fact that I absolutely love running training sessions for one day and speaking at conferences, whether that's online or in person, I love that. But if you look at Ebbinghaus's research, which was a psychologist many, many years ago, he found that typically the shot in the arm idea works for about three weeks. And after three weeks, most people default back to the same mentality and the same attitude. And that's partly why we've designed the academy where we force you to focus for, for three months, not one month, not one week on implementing and actioning and breaking through and mastering an area so that we've absolutely broke that. Now, there's a few reasons behind that. If you want the simple psychological approach is that it typically, for some research says, it takes 21 to 28 days to form a new habit and embed it. But more recent research, in fact, James Cameron, who I've done a lot of work with, is an executive coach globally with some phenomenal business leaders. And James Cameron you know, relies on this research. His research suggests that it's 66 days to embed it, meaning we've got to take your team past two months, past the 60-day or 61-day mark, in order to get to the stage at which there is mastery and breakthrough so that you'll never go back. That's what Procter & Gamble was so good at doing with us. I know they, they spent a quarter million dollars on our sales training just in year one, but it wasn't just learn it and then off you go. It was learn it and coach it and embed it and then learn it and accelerate it. And over a three-month period in the academy, that's what we take people through. So we, we actually, we really focus on learning best practice at the start. That's first month. Second month, embedding it and actioning and doing it and learning it. And some of the things work and some things don't. And then the third month is, right, now that we've embedded it, how do we accelerate? You know, how do we take it to the next level? So we will never go back to bad behavior, so to speak. And that's what we absolutely love. And again, I've got a couple of questions. Yep. What if you don't need to fix one area? Yes, absolutely. We've covered that. In fact, we've actually built the academy so that it can work with us coaching people over a three year period if they choose to take uh, take us on the journey of smashing five, then 10, then then 20 million, for example. And so actually, yes, if uh, and I know your business is a lot of repeat business. So again, in year one, you might fall the first six months, you might focus on growing all your customers. And then if you're moving to year two or likewise, if you're moving later in the year, you can go and focus just on key accounts and then you can work on more of those enterprise customers. So yes, you can stick within only three of those growth areas if you don't need to focus too much on you. That said, what we've learned in the last two years for most sectors is change can happen. And if you're not developing your ability to go after new, if you lost one or two of your major customers, I know the percentage your major customers are worth of your overall turnover. That's a risky strategy for sales or business to rely only on repeat business, even if they are on contract. Because as we've seen in the last two years, and I know in your sector, um, some people can get out of contracts. You know, they don't pay them and they find a new way. So, yes, absolutely. But yes, we've designed it in a way with total flexibility and more advanced levels, definitely. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, lucky last thoughts or questions. Forgive me, I'm just jumping between the screens.
Awesome. Okay, so um, I'm just going to give you guys another sort of 10 seconds. If you've got a question, hit return now so that it comes through in the chat box. As I said, most of the platforms we've been live streaming to today do let comments come through. Um, if we haven't answered your question today, please send us an email. You'll receive emails from us. Um, just got another question come in. Thanks, Royce. Yeah, absolutely. So a question that's come in here is, you know, can we help you um, if your growth restraints are around software systems such as CRM? Absolutely. That CRM conversation is one I've had every single month for 18 consecutive years. What CRM should I use? What system and software? I just want to go back, if I may. And so, Royce, yes, absolutely. Book in for a scale up call. Make sure, you know, a couple of you are on board with that call and we can address that and then hopefully move on to, to a strategy session with me. Um, I have to say, in my early days of selling, and I'm going to sound a bit ancient right now, there wasn't a such a thing as a CRM. You know, I remember Excel spreadsheets being considered to be CRMs, essentially. And we're just like, the, whoa, this is amazing. And doctor surgeries had hanging files, not electronic records of their patients. And those hanging files by alphabet worked fine. I worked at the number one financial recruitment company on the planet in Sydney, Australia, in the run up to the Sydney Olympics, and then afterwards as well. And we were the most successful business worldwide at the time. Our database or CRM was hanging files of candidates by first name. That was it. And when they got a job, we posted them somewhere else. And when they came out of that job, we took them out of that and put them in a hanging file. Now, it was a very candidate short market. So the value was on the candidates, not on the jobs. We could go and get jobs quite easily, but we needed to fill the jobs with great people. And we're only as good because those people are our product, right? For longer, medium to long term contracts, not permanent stuff, but medium to long term contracts. You can work off paper. You can work off an Excel spreadsheet. It should never be the case that your software is the fundamental limitation. Your limitation will always be on the people in your team, the mindset and behaviors and actions. Everything is possible, even on loose bits of paper. I've seen people manage people on post-it notes around their wall. It's a bit messy. And especially when the glue starts to go a bit faint, but it's possible. So yes, Royce, absolutely. We can help you, but we would have the discussion around systems and software, particularly in that scale area. So we can discuss it in the other areas, but if you're focused this quarter, let's say, on the scale, then we're talking about KPIs, we're talking about meeting cadence and coaching and accountability, and obviously we're talking about systems and software. So we can talk about it in other areas too. Um, also to let you know, you know, to remember all of us, very important to remember this, you could have the best software in the world, but if the team don't use it, it's irrelevant. I want to stress that I've seen so many businesses spending $30,000, $50,000 a year on world-class software and using about 10% of it. It suggests that we only use about 10% of our brain. What a waste that is. No wonder people like you and me are on a quest for more knowledge and more application and learn, learn, learn every single day because we're underutilizing this incredible ability. So again, the software won't fix it. The people will fix it. But yes, I can work with whatever you've got. So, Royce, appreciate your question on that one. Excellent question. Anyone else? Lucky last thoughts or questions? I can still see a bunch of people online. I will close down in 10 seconds unless a new question comes through. So if you're typing, hit return, even if you have to keep retyping. Five, four, three. Well, once again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Ambrose Blofield. We are the Sales Mastery Company, and we're delighted and want to say thank you and congratulations for taking time out of your busy schedule to overcome the issues around unprofitable sales teams, start to embrace growth. And as I said, book in for a free 15-minute call or scale-up call with one of our team members, and we'll take it from there and really help you scale and grow your business. It's been an absolute privilege today. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye for now.